Welcome friends. Friends, now we are starting our lectures on corporate law for CA final. And in that the major portion is by or rather it is company law. In company law, rather in companies act to be very precise, there is a difference between old syllabus and new syllabus. In the old syllabus, company law portion starts from section 128. For the new syllabus, the portion starts from section 149. Right? So the difference will be for the old syllabus, this is section 128 onwards, and for the new. This is section 149 onwards. So except the difference of these few sections, the law is same. Okay. So this much portion I am going to take separately for the students, those who are doing with the old syllabus and for the new syllabus, certainly I am doing it here now. Okay. And for this lecture, I am following the material provided by ICAI. And material will remain same for both. Right? So I am following the material provided. Now, when I start from section 149, the first very important topic is directors. Now the topic of directors is relevant not only for the purpose of exam, this is also a topic on which you will face a question on day to day basis from your clients. Right. There are three more chapters. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3. Chapter 1 covers Section 149 to 172. This covers section 173 to section 195 remaining all provisions are here section 196 to section 205 plus schedule 5 so friends open chapter number 1 and the topic is appointment and qualification of directors. Chapter 1. This is appointment and qualification of directors right so when we say appointment unless specifically pointed out appointment includes reappointment includes reappointment right so question of reappointment comes only when the term of office ends or when the person retires, right? So all those provisions are automatically covered in the topic of appointment. When we say qualification, in other words, you can say eligibility to be appointed as a director. 
along with the word comes qualification we we have another word includes disqualification also includes disqualifications so we have certain parameters which must be satisfied by an individual to be appointed as a director at the same time he should not be having the disqualifications right so this chapter is going to be quite lengthy prima facie it is only 42 pages but effectively when you read you will it, it requires good time now on the page number one itself learning outcomes are given learning outcomes means what you should be knowing after completion of this chapter right the first is know the provisions related to appointment of the board of directors number of directors woman director understand the and concept of independent director their appointment qualification tenure analyze retirement by rotation application of director identification number and its allotment know the provisions related to the additional director alternate director nominee director casual vacancy and explain disqualification of appointment of directors duties of director vacation of office by the director resignation and removal of directors so this chapter begins with the board of directors so every company is required to have the board of directors and to constitute a board certain minimum number of directors have to be there there is a limit on the maximum number of directors also then who can be appointed how they can be appointed right then appointment of woman director appointment of independent director then what is the term of office for which they can be holding office so everything is covered in this so it is very very concise material but very important i said not only for exam but otherwise in your career also this is going to be very very relevant right so we are strictly following the module and if there is a difference then i'll point it out to you separately page number two very first it says according to section 2 subsection 10 of the company's act board of directors or board in relation to company means the collective body of the board of directors first is defined board of directors right what is said is in relation to company means the collective body of the directors board of directors this is collective body of directors in other words you can also say that all the directors of the company taken together they are referred as board of directors when we say directors there are two things number one only an individual only an individual can be a director and number two properly appointed under the provisions of the act when two requirements are satisfied only then a person is a director in bigger companies you will find lots of people designated as director director marketing director sales director account director finance director this director that but they are designated as director but they are not appointed in accordance with the provisions of the companies act so designation as a director itself is not sufficient for a person to be considered as a director under the companies act right so to be a director in companies act first requirement only an individual can be a director and number two he is properly appointed and before he is appointed properly he should be eligible at the same time he should not be having any disqualification right so that is a director collective body i said all the directors taken together they are referred as board of directors now we have to understand what is the impact of board of directors for that purpose I'll just give you a reference of section 179 
what this section says this section says all the powers of company are exercisable by the board right so the act has vested all the powers of company in the board of directors act does not authorize any director in his individual capacity for anything but when functioning as a board they have all the authority they can do everything what the company can do except only those things for which we already have a specific provisions either in the act or in the articles that this thing is cannot be done by the board say for example every company has got the inherent authority to borrow but in the articles provisions are made that any the, the, the board of directors can, cannot borrow except with the prior approval of members this kind of internal restriction can be imposed then the board will not have a right to borrow except with the permission of the members right so here we said that as per section 179 all the powers of the company are exercisable by the board right and no authority given to any director in the individual capacity so individual capacity director can do anything if instructed by the board or if the powers are delegated by the board to that person act does not authorize any individual director in his independent capacity right now here the powers are given to board now when we say power given to the board the constitution must be valid constitution must be valid if the constitution of the board is invalid then automatically section 179 is not applicable because this becomes applicable only if the constitution of the board is valid now what is called a valid constitution the number of directors in the company not below statutory minimum number of directors in the company not below statutory minimum okay now statutory minimum is as given in section 149 right so company can have anything more than that but not less than what is already given in section 149 right so let us proceed further on page number two itself it says number of directors according to section 149 one of the companies act 2013 every company shall have a board of directors consisting of individuals as directors so underline the word individuals as a director so that i have already told you now we have number of directors now we have number of directors the chart is already given but i'll add something more in that number for that we can say minimum number of directors and maximum number of directors now for minimum if it is a one person company one director if it is a private company minimum required is three and if it is a public company minimum required is three okay so one two and three the requirement will automatically increase subject to applicability of other provisions but as per section 149 this is section 149 the number of directors in the company shall not be less than these numbers and maximum given is 15 but the number of maximum directors can be increased by passing a special resolution in the general meeting this can be increased by passing a special resolution in general meeting so number of directors may exceed 15 also but first of all provisions have to be made in the articles for having a number of directors more than 15 and for doing that a special resolution is required 
and here we have exemptions exemption for the number of directors and for increasing both exemptions are there to two types of companies number one government companies are exempt and number two section eight companies are exempt so and in the earlier law section eight companies now earlier in the earlier law those were section 25 companies right so exemption is available to the government companies as well as to section eight companies okay so this is about the number but then comes out of these directors at least one director at least one director should have resided in India resided in India for at least 182 days during preceding calendar year. Now this is something important because generally we refer financial year but here the requirement is related to calendar year. And for that you can refer the next page that is section 149 subsection 3 that is page number 4 the title given is resident director every company shall have at least one director who has stayed in India for a total period of not less than 182 days in the previous calendar year so the word used is calendar year it is not the financial year right so friends I have explained to you what is the meaning of director what is the meaning of board what is board of directors what is valid board and then I said the number of directors not being less than minimum and the importance as per section 149 all the powers of company are exercisable by the board of directors but subject to any special provisions in the act or in the articles of association what is minimum number that is section 149 subsection 1 that says private one person company one director private company two director public company three directors and maximum number of director not to exceed 15 unless that number has been increased by passing a special resolution in the general meeting and there is an exemption exemption given to the government companies as well as to the section 8 companies so those companies may have more than 15 directors even without passing a special resolution in the general meeting and then the condition comes at least one director of the company should have stayed or resided in India for at least 182 days during preceding calendar year okay now moving further now two special requirements are there one is about the woman director and another is about the independent director so first we'll talk about woman director If the requirement is there the company should always have a woman director at least one woman director is required which are the companies where the part where this is required page number three this says at least one woman director shall be on the board of such class or classes of companies as may be prescribed so where the woman director is required woman director where needed in case of a listed company and in case of unlisted company as far as the listed company is concerned the requirement is always but 
in case of unlisted companies at least one parameter must be satisfied and the parameters are the company is having a uh, paid up capital of not less than rupees 100 crores or it is having the turnover of at least rupees 300 crores so one of the requirement is satisfied then the appointment becomes necessary so in case of unlisted company so either we have paid up capital of rupees 100 crores or more or turnover of rupees 300 crore or more right so as far as section is concerned section says in such classes of companies as may be prescribed and this has been given in rule number three of the company's appointment and qualification of directors so this eligibility criteria that for listed it is always and for pay, in case of unlisted paid up capital 100 crore and, and turnover of 300 crore this requirement comes from this is rule number three and for this chapter directors companies directors appointment and qualification rules rule number three okay now this further says in the next paragraph it says company has been incorporated under this act and is covered under the provisions of subsection 1 of section 114 and shall comply with the provisions within a period of six months from the date of incorporation so by chance if a company is incorporated and it fulfills the requirement of either this or this or this so new company certainly cannot fulfill the requirement of being a listed company but it can fulfill this requirement of a capital so if the capital exceeds more than 100 crore within six months from the date of incorporation then the requirement must be satisfied within six months since incorporation and for that also there is exemption given if you look at the bottom there is there are footnote that says ifsc so these are international financial services center those are not bound by this obligation then what is the further requirement that i said once an appointment is made one woman director should always be there on the board of directors of the company okay now what happens if by chance a vacancy is created right so vacancy can be created for multiple reasons the woman director retires and is not willing to be reappointed or she is not eligible for reappointment or she is resigned or otherwise there is some other casual vacancy so where if the vacancy arises right then how the vacancy should be filled up for that they say further any intermittent vacancy of a woman director shall be filled up by the board at the earliest but not later than immediate next board meeting or three months from the date of the vacancy whichever comes later right so here is the question of intermittent vacancy by chance if there is any so if there is a vacancy So the responsibility given to the board, board shall fill up the vacancy at the earliest. Read it again. Any intermittent vacancy of the woman director shall be filled up by the board. Why it is given to the board? Because generally appointments are in the general meeting. And if it is a vacancy, there is a time limit given that either in the immediately following board meeting or three months, whichever comes later, then the board the vacancy shall be filled up. And during this period, there may not be a general meeting. So it is only the board which will have the right to fill up the vacancy by appointing the lady or the woman as an additional director. Right? So this is the responsibility given to the board, that board shall fill up. And this is not a choice, this is obligation that the vacancy should be filled up. The board shall fill up the vacancy at the earliest. But if it is not time bound, even the words at the earliest also will not have any meaning. Right? So this says, either next board meeting,
or three months since first i have to write whichever is later whichever is later from which date since vacancy is created since vacancy is created so since the requirement of having a woman on the board of directors is necessary to be necessarily required to be complied with somebody is appointed and there is a vacancy created for some reason in that situation it has to be filled up by the board at the earliest possible and earliest for that the time frame is either before the next meeting or three months whichever comes later since the date the vacancy has been created but this appointment has to be done now there is an illustration given there is an example this example says in xyz limited an intermittent vacancy of the woman director arises on 15th of june 15th of june year 2017 so three months that is july august september so by 15th of september or the first board meeting held after this whichever comes later so three months is 15th of september that the vacancy shall be filled up by the board at the earliest but not later than the date of the next board meeting or three months from the date of the vacancy whichever is later further it says after the vacancy the immediate board meeting is on 14th of august 14th of august right so this is within two months since the vacancy has been created the board is having the time up to 15th of september so because the section says whichever is later it is not saying whichever is earlier so whichever is later so the vacancy shall be filled up by 14th august or by 14th september that is three months whichever is later in this case it shall be filled up by 14th of september if after the vacancy the immediate board meeting held on the 14th of october the vacancy shall be filled up by 14th of october or by 14th of september whichever is later in this case it shall be filled up by 14th october 20th 7 right so this line you have to understand carefully time limit for filling up the vacancy this is either 3 months or first board meeting after the date of vacancy whichever is later so in one example itself they have included two situation where vacancy is being created on 15th of june and there is a first board meeting in the month of august 14th of august so from 15th june to 14th of august only two months have gone so in that case three months is longer so the vacancy can be filled up up to 14th of september right but by chance if the first board meeting after the vacancy itself is in the month of october then the time limit automatically goes up to the date of first board meeting held after the vacancy is created right so this kind of practical situations you can expect something in the exam so these are very few provisions regarding women director again revising when a woman director is required the woman director's appointment is compulsory in case of every public company as well as in unlisted companies rather I, th I think I committed some mistake. Okay, so the appointment of woman director is compulsory in every listed company, and if it is the unlisted company, then the appointment is necessary when the paid-up capital is 100 crore or more, or the turnover is 300 crore or more, and the seat is permanent. Maybe subject to retirement by rotation. That is another thing, but the seat is permanent. Now, by chance, if the vacancy has been created, then vacancy shall be filled up by the board of directors within three months or in the first board meeting held after the date of the creation of the vacancy, whichever comes. later okay so these are the provisions regarding woman director the next is resident director this we have already talked about that at least one of the directors of the company should have resided or stayed in india for at least 182 days during preceding financial year so friend this is only the first lecture and it is an introduction to you that how the lectures are going to be right later on also we'll follow the material and i'll give you my own explanations about that so the things become more easy for you to understand okay and every lecture i'm going to keep for around half an hour's time so that you can view the lectures or videos at any point of time whenever you have even half an hour's time okay so till the next lecture have a good time